powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoguera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. This is the day the Lord has made. We we'll rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transmit broadcast as we receive the engrafted word of God. Today I've been looking at compassion for the lost. You know, Jesus uh, saved us as we can be relevant to our generation, as we can become useful to the kingdom of God. But we can't truly be useful to the kingdom if we don't have compassion for the lost. You know, so winning should be a major part of your daily routine. It should be part of what you do to reach out to people, to minister to people, to see how you can bring them into the knowledge of the will of God. Losing compassion for the lost is an indication that we're losing passion for true ministry. As a losing compassion for the loss is an indication that we are losing passion for true ministry. If your ministry is going to be strategic, effective, and productive, there is a need for compassion. You know, Jesus was moved with compassion. Then you begin to see the big picture of God. You begin to see the knowledge of his will. You begin to see the plan and the purpose of God. Compassion, uh, compassion in the right direction will help us to unlock the will of God. Compassion in the right direction will help us to unlock the will of God. There are so many people today that are lost in our world, that are going through all kinds of situations that is not consistent with God's will. There is a need for me to cultivate compassion because with compassion you can reach out to the lost. With compassion, Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is a collective responsibility. If you are born again, you are called into that assignment. Hmm? If you are born again, you are called into that assignment of reaching the laws, of ministering to the laws. And there are many ways that God will be leading us to do it today, to, to reach out to the laws, to minister to people who are going through one situation or the other. And for that reason, we need to be wise with the resources that God has entrusted to our care and use it to reach out to people. Now, Developing compassion should be part of what you think as a person that I need to grow in compassion. Sometimes we can see people who are not saved, people who lack the knowledge of the will of God, but, but we don't care. It, it, we don't care anymore. Most of us don't think about soul winning. Most of us don't think about reaching out to the lost. You see, you are relevant to God based on how committed you are to the Great Commission. I said you are relevant to God based on how you are committed to the Great Commission. You are relevant to God based on how you are committed to the Great Commission. You are relevant to God based on how you are committed to the Great Commission. You see, the Great Commission is the will of God. And God wants to see you becoming strategic with purpose, with what he has called you to do, that will become the church that is reaching out. When I talk about the church, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. We'll be, not just the building. we will become the church that is reaching out. The church that is ministering life to people. The church that has become the salt of the earth. The church that is ministering hope to those who are in need, to those who are in pain, to those who are being humiliated by the circumstances and the adversities of life. When we have the revelation of compassion, it is an indication that we are connecting with the nature of the Father God. Compassion is the nature of the Father. Compassion was what moved Jesus to that cross. Compassion was why he hung on that cross. Because when you have compassion for people, you are willing to do anything that is consistent with the will of God 
to minister life to them, to minister liberty to them, to minister direction to them, because compassion will move you in the direction of glorifying God. Compassion will move you in the direction of glorifying God. So the question here today is, do you have compassion for the sinners? Do you have compassion for those who have not come into the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? That compassion will move you to bring ministry to people, whether it is in the mall. This is why we got to listen to the Holy Ghost. You are driving, you are in the shopping mall, you are in the bank, you are in the office, and the Holy Ghost will just try a word in your heart. The Holy Ghost will just say, minister to this mercy. Compassion will open the door of the flow of the Spirit. Yes, when you have compassion for people, it's going to open door for greater things of the Spirit. If we want to see greater things of the Spirit, we need to develop our compassion. You know, sometimes in the ministry, you, you can be hurt or, uh, you know, people did something to you as a minister or as a leader. And then before you realize, you can begin to lose your compassion for people. You, you can develop this mentality, oh, everyone I have, they will not come back to, to honor me or to do this. You know, we are in this assignment by God. The Lord Jesus Christ healed 10 leaders. And it was only one that came back to say thank you. So, so you shouldn't be frustrated that you minister to people and they got better. They never came back to you to appreciate. It happened to Jesus. But Jesus kept moving. You see, if you truly want to fulfill your assignment, you can't be focusing on how people respond to you. You have to focus on what God is telling you. If what God is telling you is your focus, offense will not distract your mission. If what God is telling you is your focus, offense will not distract your mission. There are so many people today being distracted by offense. They are being distracted by, by opposition. They are being distracted by those that told them you can make it in life. They are being distracted by all kinds of situations. But if you truly want to succeed with God, you have to stay out of offense because offense has the potential to limit you from being all that God wants you to be. You know, when Jesus healed those lepers, he expected them to return back and appreciate and continue in the ministry with him or to support the work of the ministry. But none of them came back, only one. One of them came back, only one of them. Imagine if those ten lepers, every one of them came back and said, Lord, we're happy that you healed us. Lord, teach us how to heal the sick. Lord, we want to have compassion for those who are also lepers like us. Can you pray with us? Can you teach us as you can go back into that world and minister to people? This is to show you how selfish people could be. Sometimes people can be so selfish that all they think about is themselves. They receive the healing power of God. They receive the anointing of the Spirit. But all they're thinking about is themselves. But compassion for people will empower you to go extraordinary mile to go extra mile for the kingdom of God. We can we can only go extra mile for the kingdom when we understand the power in compassion. You know, Jesus said the sheep are scattered. You know, he was talking about sheep scattered without shepherd. There are, there are sheep that are scattered without shepherd. Now, he was trying to let us know there are so many people today that their life, their dream, their marriage is scattered. That it is by we reaching out to them with the gospel that can bring them together, that can give them a hope, that can give them a sense of direction, that can give them a sense of future. When we, when we minister to them, when we bring life to them, when we go ahead of them and we will let them know that God loves you. You know, how many people today that believe that God is against them? There are so many millions of people that believe that God is against them, God is against their family, this is why nothing is working for them, but that is not the truth. God is not against them, God is for them. But well, because they lack the knowledge of who he is, they couldn't relate with him properly. But for people to relate with God, we have to teach them, and compassion will set us on the right path. Compassion will set your vision in motion. One of the ways we put our vision on motion is when we have compassion. That's one of the ways we put our vision in motion when we have compassion. Because compassion will drive you to doing things for people that you cannot naturally do for them. But because you have compassion for them, you want the will of God to be made manifest in their life. 
Because you want the will of God. You're thinking the kingdom. How can these people receive the word of God? How can they receive the knowledge of his will? You're thinking this. This is how you know a kingdom-minded person because compassion drives them. Compassion for the lost. And let me say this to you. Compassion doesn't just come to us. We develop compassion. How do we develop compassion? We develop compassion by renewing our mind in the knowledge of the will of God. Because when you understand God's will, one of the key things that you do is to develop, it will help you develop compassion for the things of the Spirit. It will help you develop compassion for His will, for His plan, for His purpose, for that which He has called you to do. And can I say this to you? Compassion. Is an ingredient of great faith. I said, compassion is an ingredient of great faith. If you say you're great in faith and you don't have compassion for people, you have to reconsider your faith. If you say you're great in faith and you don't have compassion, where there is compassion for people, there will be a flow of the anointing. There will be a flow of healing. That was why the ministry of Jesus had this healing, this miracle, because he, he was always, he, he wants to help people. He wants to minister to people. He wants to give direction to people. And if you want to take the lead in these last days, there is a need to develop compassion for the heart, to develop compassion for the lost, to develop compassion for the oppressed, to develop compassion for those who have no one to help them. You see, the word of God was given to us as the resources for transforming life. I said the word of God was given to us as a resources for transforming life. The word of God was given to us as a resources for transforming life. We cannot truly transform lives if, if we don't have the word of God in our spirit. And this is why we got to meditate on the scriptures. We have to meditate on God's word and receive revelation. You see, when people hear God's word, they're hearing life. In Psalm 107 verse 20 said, He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So what is going to heal the people is the word of God. In Romans chapter 1, Paul was talking about, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He said, it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone that believes. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. You see, compassion helps you to be bold in the right direction. I said, compassion helps you to be bold in the right direction. Compassion, because when you have compassion, you become bold in the right direction. You want to reach out. You want to become what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13, 14, and 15. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the city set on the hill. He said, you begin to live a life of purpose because you understand the principle of compassion. Because you understood the principle of compassion, it helps you to move in the direction of the will of God. If you are watching this broadcast today, I want you to understand that God has a plan for you. And that plan will come into reality when you understand the principle of compassion towards humanity. We are here to minister life, not to condemn life. The Bible said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That language is born out of the spirit of compassion. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever that believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, that word came out of compassion. Passion. He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. It is compassion that made Jesus to change situation for others. Compassion. is when you have compassion, you're looking for opportunity to be a blessing to people. When you have compassion, you're looking for opportunity to minister the will of God to the lost. When you have compassion, it helps you exceed the expectation people have about you. You are reaching out, you are advancing to make things happen in the kingdom. Don't lose your compassion because of offense. Don't lose your compassion because you are trying to help people and there was an opposition and there were challenges and now you are pulling back. Now you are saying, well... I'm not going to help anybody anymore. I'm, I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired of being frustrated. Compassion will keep you in the right direction. Because as you, as you choose to be compassionate for people, God will keep pouring grace into you to carry out His will. 
God will keep pouring grace into you to be able to minister to people. He will pour the grace into you. Can I say this to you? Jesus is coming soon. We need to be more focused on reaching the lost. Whatever you are doing today in the kingdom, always think about the salvation of people. Always think about the salvation. You're a businessman, you're a businesswoman. You need to hand tracks over to people. You need to drop some materials for them, something for them to read. You need to talk, go to your Facebook page, tell people about Jesus. Use your tweet page, tell people about Jesus. We are in the era where media is playing a vital role. So we don't need to sit down and watch the world take over the media. We the church should use the media as a major tool to bring the gospel to people. But this I'm saying to you is rooted in compassion to minister. If there is no compassion to minister to God's people, we won't be able to take advantage of the resources at our disposal. We won't be able to take advantage of what God has given to us. Compassion is the key to unlocking greater possibilities. When you have compassion for people, the doors will be open for ministry. One of the things that opens the door for ministry is compassion. Compassion opens the door for ministry and, and the Holy Ghost begins to pour more into you. Jesus said something in Luke chapter 4, if you read from verse 17 to 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to minister to the sick. You know, if you look at that, I, I like to read it right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In, in Luke Gospel chapter 4, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Luke Gospel chapter 4, I want to read from uh, verse 17, he said, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet uh, Isaiah, and when he has opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This, this scripture, we can find it in Isaiah 61. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is Jesus talking. This statement is born out of compassion for people. He has anointed me to minister to people. He has anointed me to bring ministry. He has anointed me to preach the poor, to preach the gospel to the poor, to send me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive. When you have compassion for people, God will give you opportunity to reach them. I said, when you have compassion for people, God will give you an opportunity to reach them. When you have compassion for people, doors of opportunity, doors of ministry will be open to you to carry out the will of God because compassion is important in the manifestation of the things of the Spirit. Compassion, because losing compassion is losing direction. You know, some people said, well, I can't do this anymore. Oh, I'm tired of doing this. But God doesn't want you to lose your compassion. God doesn't want you to lose your compassion. You need to rekindle the passion, the passion for ministry, the passion to preach the gospel. Make it part of your weekly schedule, at least in a week as you talk to one person, or in every week as you speak to two persons about Jesus, or you put it part of your, your, your monthly vision that I'm going to reach four people in a month. Imagine every one of us have a target to preach the gospel to five people in, in a month, five persons. Let's just say a very favorable target, you know, it's not very, very big or huge, but we said, I'm going to reach five persons in a month. Imagine if every one of us in the body of Christ make that our goal, man, Jesus will come very soon. Because if everyone is involved, you're involved in your city, I'm involved in my city, everyone is involved in Facebook or Twitter, or we are all reaching out to people, we are going to be a great army saving the lost in these last days. But there are so many people today that have lost their passion for soul winning, have lost their passion when it comes to the things of the kingdom. They are not passionate anymore. They used to be committed to ministry. They used to be passionate about the things of the spirit. But right now they have lost the passion. One of the ways you rekindle your passion is to get back into God's word. 
as you begin to pray in the spirit, as you begin to study the word of God, as you meditate on God's word, your passion for the things of the spirit will begin to rise and then you will move in the direction of the will of God. I'm here to say to you, whatever God has called you to do, whatever God has anointed you to do, never lose your passion for it. It may be challenging, it may be demanding, but it's also rewarding. It's also beautiful. So the call of God for your life should be protected. You should pursue it passionately, knowing there is eternal reward for everything God asks you to do or called you to do. I believe there is a great ministry within you. I believe God has called you this last day to preach the gospel. Whether you're a medical doctor, you're an attorney, you're a businessman, it doesn't matter what your profession is. Get involved in preaching the gospel and we'll be saving the nation. By God's word. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as a Lord and Savior, you can say this after me Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me, it means you're born again. And I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. And also, you can connect with me on finishworktv.com. Finishwork TV is a ministry on the cutting edge, helping many people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. Finishworktv.com. And also, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. Your partnership will be helping us to reach out to more people around the world. So, you can partner with us via PayPal, it's Faith Man Teaching at gmail.com. Can partner with us on PayPal is Fragment Teaching at gmail.com. And also want to encourage you to keep sharing the gospel. Keep telling more people about Jesus. Jesus is coming very soon. And don't stop preaching the gospel until my next broadcast. Don't ever forget this. There is witness in you.